Hello and welcome to this video where today we are doing some revision for the AQA turning points option and we're going to be looking at wave particle duality. So this will be really, really quick revision from things that you did last year. So we've already seen uh, both last year and also um, in turning points that uh, this thing here, so this photoelectric effect, so uh, photoelectric effect, this thing provided evidence that light was made up of photons photoelectric effect and this so that was photons um, so basically we could assume that light was made of some sort of very very small um, massless particle um, we've also seen that um, diffraction occurs with light so we've got diffraction here so if you remember back to what we did uh, what you did last year and also when we looked at electron diffraction in nuclear physics uh, when you have diffraction, if you pass um, a light ray in this case, um, and the wavelength is the distance between these wave fronts here, provided the gap is roughly the same sort of size as the wavelength, then what you get is you get your diffraction pattern like this, where the wave fronts, instead of being straight, are all spread out. And the wavelength remains the same, uh, but now the wave, instead of going in one direction, will spread out in lots of different directions. Um, in exactly the same way, um, if we send this wave towards an object that's of the same size, then if we have our wave fronts again like this, and our light rays coming towards an object of approximately the same size, when the light rays get when the light ray gets here, it, then these things will diffract around here. So you'll have your wave fronts coming along, and what they'll do is um, they will diffract around this particular object here. So objects can cause diffraction just the same as gaps can. So this really puzzled scientists because you'd got Einstein saying light's photons, you'd got evidence that light is a wave because diffraction is only a wave thing, it can't possibly be a particle type thing, which is why um, um, Huygen, for example, convinced everybody that light was a wave. So um, what could light possibly be? Now, if you remember back to last year, um, in the end, you had uh, this guy, so you had this de Broglie person, and his name is spelled like that, so it's de Broglie, but it's pronounced de Broglie, and he basically said, well, why can't it be both? And um, he came up with this equation, so he basically said that um, the wavelength in metres, so you've got your wavelength here, in metres, must be equal to Platt's Planck's constant, which we know is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So that's Planck's constant, divided by this thing. So you've got mass times velocity. So um, remember, mv is basically equal to the momentum of an object. But uh, we can still use m as the mass in kilograms separately and v is the velocity in meters per second. So if we know the mass and the velocity, we could work out the momentum and put that into that equation here. So um, if we do a couple of examples, we've got um, a person, they're walking along one meter per second, what would their wavelength be? So we simply take the equation like this, lambda equals h over mv, put the numbers in. So h, as we've just seen, 6.63, times 10 to the minus 34, like that, divided by, the, well the mass is just 70 kilograms, and the velocity of the person is just one meter per second, and if you do that on your calculator, you get um, 9.5 times 10 to the power of minus 36 meters. So if we go back to this thing over here, diffraction is only observed when the wavelength of your wave is roughly the same size as the gap or the object. Well, this is approximately 26 orders of magnitude less than the size of an atom. It's even approximately 20 orders of magnitude less than the nucleus of an atom. So basically, um, a person isn't going to diffract because there's no gaps, and there's no objects that are this sort of size that a person could diffract around. So that's why a person always behaves like a solid thing and not like a wave. If you take a wavelength of an electron, however, that's traveling really fast, because it's got a small mass, it's got a high velocity, then we're going to end up with um, a wavelength that we can actually do things with. So again, it's exactly the same. We take 
this particular equation here. Um, again, h is Planck's constant. This time, the mass of your electron is um, so m would be if you're going to put this into your equation, 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kilograms. Like that, and the velocity we're told in the question is here. And if we do that on our calculator, we basically end up um, to one significant figure because we've only got one significant figure in our question. Uh, one times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And this is roughly the sort of, same sort of diameter of an atom. So if we fire these electrons towards atoms, then the, then the atoms are approximately the same size as the wavelength um, of the electrons. And so you would see diffraction. And so that's what people first thought they'd do. And they basically did this. So um, they, they created some electrons via, well, not created the electrons, but they freed some electrons up from a metal surface via therm, thermionic emission here and these electrons are fired here and they were fired towards a sheet of either very thin metal or graphite and they then observed what happened on a screen and so here we had a fluorescent screen that basically gl uh, it glows up whenever electrons hit it and they saw this pattern here which is potentially what you saw um, in your first year when you first had a look at this um, and what they then decided to do was basically change the speed of these things. And the way they change the speed of these things is as these electrons are accelerated through a potential difference like this, they simply altered the, the size of the accelerating potential. And they knew that if the potential of this um, anode here that attracted the electrons um, was bigger, the electrons would get faster. And so if you think about your equations, you've got your De Broglie equation like this, and if you make if you make the velocity bigger, so the things go faster. If you make the velocity increase, then the De Broglie wavelength of the electrons will go down. And then if you go back to your things that we knew about diffraction, so your diffract your general diffraction equation n lambda equals d sine theta, for example. If we're looking at just the first ring. So n is 1, um, and d is the spacing between the atoms. So you've got all of these atoms here, and all of the spacings for this particular thing all remain constant. n and d are constants. So basically, if we make the wavelength go down, then what's going to happen is the angle is going to go down as well. And so they were the predictions that de Broglie made um, from his, his theory of wave-particle duality. And that's exactly what people saw. And so that's exact. And so basically, that's what led uh, scientists to believe that light does in fact have this wave-particle duality. Now, obviously, what we'd really like to do is be able to to work out this wavelength, this wavelength here, um, experimentally. And measuring the velocity of electrons is really difficult. But if we're creating these things via thermionic emission, and they're created at this cathode here, and then accelerated in this direction using an electric field. If we know the potential difference across these two plates, which we could do simply by using a voltmeter, um, then we can therefore work out this de Broglie wavelength. So this is how we would do it. In order to come up with the equation that we need, we simply start off with this equation here because the kinetic energy of the electrons, so the kinetic energy that the electrons gain is equal to the amount of work that the electric field does. So we've got this equation again. So this equation is kind of popping up all over the place. We're going to rearrange this equation by simply by multiplying both sides by 2. And if we do that, we get this equation here. So just multiply both sides by 2. Multiply both sides by m. So I get m squared v squared is equal to 2me times the potential that we're accelerating these things through. And then I'm going to square root both sides, so I just get mv. So mv is equal to the square root of 2 M E V A. So the momentum or the mass times the velocity is simply the square root of two times the mass of the electron times by the charge of the electron times by the, the potential difference that we're accelerating these elect electrons through. So I can take this MV and I can plug it straight to this equation, which in the end means that the de Broglie wavelength is easily worked out experimentally from this equation here like this. So provided I know the mass of the electron, which I do from my data sheet, and I know the charge of the electron, which I do from my data sheet, and I know the potential difference that I accelerate the electrons through 
when we create these um, from, via this thermionic emission, this electron gun here, then I can work out the wavelength. So in terms of what you need to know for the exam, um, you need to know basically that the photoelectric effect shows the particle-like nature of light in terms of photons, that diffraction shows the wave-like nature of light because diffraction is a wave-only um, effect, particles can't diffract. You also need to know this, that the diffraction is observed when the wavelength of the wave is approximately the same size. As long as it's there or thereabouts, you'll see some diffraction. Um, you then need to be able to use this equation here, just like we did, or alternatively arrange, rearrange this thing. And then what you would need to be able to do is to describe why it was that de Broglie's theory was, um, was accepted. And if you put this equation here with your diffraction equation, you can say what would happen if the velocity increases. And so what was observed and what was predicted and we and show that they're both the same thing and then in the end come up with this equation here where you can experimentally work out the de Broglie wavelength of electrons simply by using the accelerating um, potential and these two constants. So we're going to finish off by looking at a quick worked example. We have a beam of electrons that's created through thermionic emission and then we accelerate them through 3.5 kilovolts and we want to know what the de Broglie wavelength is. So we'll just start off with our equation that we've just derived like that. And we'll simply just put our numbers in. So uh, Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 over the square root of, we'll need a big square root, 2 times mass of electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms multiplied by the charge of the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, multiplied by the potential difference, so 3,500. And if we simply just do that on our calculator, we enter two significant figures, because this is to two significant figures, I end up with 2.1 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, like that. So it's had the wavelength of these particular electrons slightly smaller than the diameter of an atom. So um, that was wave particle duality revision with an extra little bit added on uh, looking at the um, anode potential and how that relates to the de Broglie wavelength. So um, that's it from me. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.